You all right, my loves? Welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a very sexy, going out, glam look. This is more of a male to female transformation. We're gonna be turning into a woman today. And it's gonna be a very black, smoky eye that absolutely anyone can do. Especially those with hooded eyes like me. So let's get into this fabulous transformation, going out sexy makeup. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to prime our eyes. So I always start on the eyes first. It's just tons easier doing your eyes first and then you don't have to clean up any stuff when you've done your face. So I'm gonna take the H&B Cosmetics Concealer and this is in the shade 0.5N and we're gonna basically just plop this all over the eye. And this is gonna act as a nice little base so our eyeshadows have something to stick onto. Plop it all over the eye. And then with a nice flat brush, we're gonna pat it into the skin and take it right up to your eyebrow. And you can actually shape your eyebrow with this concealer. You can draw right underneath and get a really nice sharp line. Just remember to pat it into place. You don't wanna swish it around and take it all over the place. You want to pat it into the skin so it locks in place and it has that super seamless blend. So now it's time for the actual eyeshadow part. And this eyeshadow look is super friendly to beginners. Absolutely anyone can do it. And I'm gonna be using products that you can use, you can buy that are quite affordable and really beginner friendly as well. So first things first, we're gonna take a cream product. And this is a Made by Mitchell blush. It's in the shade Caramel Drizzle. It's a nice brown bronzy color. And we're gonna use it on our eyes and blend it out as a nice smoky brown color. It's a lot easier to blend out than eyeshadow, which is why I'm doing it. So you can get a nice brown eyeshadow in place and then we'll go in with the deeper browns and the black. So I'm gonna take this color and I'm literally just gonna pat it on the outer corner of the eye. Cause this is where most of our eyeshadow is gonna be. It's gonna be on the outer corner blending outwards. And I'm gonna start just kind of plopping it inwards towards the eye as well. Same on the other side. Plop it on the outer corner. Remember to get some of it on the eyelid as well, right on the outer part of the eyelid because you want it all to blend together. You don't wanna leave it out. And then taking it slightly into the eye, into that crease. And I'm gonna take a really fluffy eyeshadow brush and we're gonna basically pat this into the eye so just patting right on top of it and then patting them edges and look how it blends it's so much easier to blend than an eyeshadow which is why i'm using it because i know a lot of people struggle with the eyes and the eyeshadow and the blending this is a much easier way to get your eyeshadow on there and it dries matte as well so it is going to last you and it's not going to crease or anything I'm using this today as a nice little base so we can put some brown eyeshadows on top so we kind of know where we're going to be putting them. But because this is a smoky eye look, it's the easiest look you can ever do, by the way. There's no precise lines, it's all just eyeshadow and blending and it's super easy to do and it does literally suit everyone. Patting right across and I'm patting it in because we've got that concealer underneath. Patting this colour in just helps blend it into the base underneath, which is why we put it there in the first place. So there's no harsh lines and it just looks extra blended. I'm going to take some more of that colour, the cream colour. I'm actually going to put it right in here as well because it's not really blended in there too much because it blends out a little bit too much. So it's a little bit subtle for my liking. We want this to be a sexy going out look. We don't want it to be natural. We're not doing natural on this channel. <laughs> so patting it into the inner half of the eye as well. And you can even put it on the eyelid if you want to. Not that big of a deal. Cause we're gonna be putting black there later on. So don't worry about it. And I'm not taking it too high. I'm taking it quite high cause I've got hooded eyes. So I need it to show up. But I'm not taking it all the way to the eyebrow either. You don't want to take it all the way up there because then you'll end up with massive, what we used to call garage door eyeshadow, which is not the look you want. It's a bit too rubbish. <laughs> so now it's time for some eyeshadow. So I'm going to be taking this P. Louise. It's, I call it the birthday palette. It's literally a small palette like this. It has all these gorgeous new tones. I mean, look at that. I, as a drag queen, would say this is a boring palette. <laughs> but 
But as a makeup artist, I picked this up and I was like, this is the perfect palette. It's got every brown. It's got a dark brown that's almost black. They're all matte eyeshadows and they're absolutely perfect for beginners because you can literally go one, two, three and you're done. So I'm going to be using this today and I'm going to be dipping into... Ooh, about this colour first, just to set this in place and make sure it looks really nice. So dipping into this colour, it's like a medium pink undertone brown. And this is a really fluffy eyeshadow brush. I think it's a Holly Fitzmartin brush. And we're going to basically brush this along where we put that cream product before. Just brushing it along, you can be really messy with it. You don't have to be precise at all because it's essentially the exact same colour. We're just setting it down with powder so it looks really smooth and it won't budge. And this is why we did it with the cream first because it's already pretty much blended out. We don't really need to do any special blending or anything. Whilst if you did this with just eyeshadow, you have to go in with this brush, put it on and blend it out with another brush and it's a whole hassle. Again on this side, just brushing it along. And if you have noticed, I have got some lovely face tapes on today. I did not mention it. You probably think, what has she got dangling from her ears? It has some weird earrings. These are just lovely face tapes. So when we pull them back, it will really snatch my eyes up. Especially with a smoky eye because my eye is quite droopy. So I like to snatch them up to make sure they look decent. Now we're going to go in with a deeper colour, so I'm taking another clean brush. It's important that you use always clean brushes for every single eyeshadow. Don't use the same eyeshadow brush for every single shade, it's just not going to work. It's going to look mucky, terrible. Use a clean brush for every single eyeshadow you use. We're going to go into a darker brown now. We're going to go into this one right here. It's just basically a darker version of that. It's got a little bit of warmth to it. And we're going to take this on this other fluffy brush. This is from Jessup Beauty, I believe. We're going to pack this on the outer corner first. And we're packing it on the outer corner because we're not going to be taking this all the way out. We're going to literally put this in our crease. So we're just patting it along and creating a nice crease shape, which if you look like that, it's basically where your lid meets the rest of your eye. I'm going to be putting this slightly higher than the crease because I want people to be able to see it. Because I've got hooded eyes, you can't really see the eyeshadow unless I put it really high up, which is why we're going super high with this brown smoky colour. And we're going to put this all the way around here as well. Taking it into the inner corner. Again, don't worry, you can put it on the lid. It's not that big a deal because we're going to put black there in a way. Just patting this on. Don't worry about blending it just yet. We can blend it afterwards. Just get that colour on there. So now we put that darker brown on. We're going to blend it into the rest of the look. So I'm taking the exact same eyeshadow brush we used before, the Holly Fitz Martin one. I'm taking that medium brown colour. I'm just going to tickle it along the edge of that dark eyeshadow. This is how you blend the eyeshadows together. So I've created a nice harsh line before. And then I'm going in with the brush and I'm just tickling the edge because we want this look to be a statement look. We don't want it to just blend and be wishy-washy into one. We want to make sure the colours that you're putting on are seen. We don't want it just to be a really basic look. We still want it to be dramatic. So we're just going to blend the edges and if you end up blending too much, you can always put the darker colour back. Don't worry about it. So just softening that edge. And the same on this side, just softening the edge of that dark shadow. And to blend as well, make sure you go in in side to side motions. Don't do any twirls or swirls or anything fancy. Literally just go side to side like this and it will blend the edge out perfectly. And nudes can be the hardest colour to work with. Like I always think blues, purples, greens are easier than nudes because they can turn muddy really quickly. So don't worry about it. They are harder to some people like me. As long as you stick to your dark colour, your medium colour and your black, then you're pretty much good. So now we're going to go into our darkest brown, which is this last one right here. And we're just going to add a pinch of this before we go with the black, just so the black has something to kind of blend into. We don't want to go too harsh and then have nothing to blend the black into. I'm taking this on a smaller brush, this is the P. Louise one, and I'm getting quite a lot of this dark brown, and I'm basically putting it right in that crease. I'm not taking it too far up, just in that actual crease shape. Bringing it slightly around here, 
And smoky eyes can be one of them looks where it doesn't make any sense until you've got the black on, the lashes, everything's come together. That tends to be most of my makeup looks, not gonna lie. We're just brushing it on the outer corner first, like the rest of the eyeshadows, and then bringing it in to the crease ever so slightly. Remember to take a little bit of eyeshadow at a time, build it up. Don't just go in with a massive brush and loads of eyeshadow and expect a perfect result. It's not gonna work. <laughs> you need to go in section by section, like I'm doing with this dark color, especially with the dark colors, because they tend to get messy really quickly. So just remember to take it section by section, small parts at first. Don't rush. Most of the people I teach makeup to in lessons, one of the biggest things I teach them is to have patience and not to rush it. Because if you're rushing your makeup, it's gonna look rushed. This is a really easy look. It's not that hard to do. It's, you know, a quicker look. It's not like a full drag cut crease or anything, but it can be a bit tricky sometimes. So just remember to take your time with it and enjoy doing it as well. Cause then it'll come out looking really nice, whether it's good or not. If you enjoy it, it'll look good. I'm blending that out with the other brush. I'm not actually gonna take any products onto this brush cause it might have some still left on it. And this is a dark brown brush. And we're just smoking out that darkest brown into the rest of the look. If things ever get a little bit out of control, I mean, mine's looking pretty good. It just needs a little bit extra blending. Take a clean eyeshadow brush and just blend over anywhere that looks patchy or you're a bit unsure about. Just blend it with a clean brush and it will all blend into one another. So don't worry, you don't have to go back and be like, oh, I need more of this, more of this. Just take a clean brush, fix up any areas because it might not be the colours, it might just be the blending. And don't worry about it, it's a smoky look in a way. It's not meant to be perfect, it's meant to be grungy and sexy and a bit rough around the edges. There's no precise cut crease or anything, so don't worry about it. It'll look good either way. And now it's time to add the black into the look. So I'm actually gonna be using eyeliner for this, and this is a Maybelline gel liner. And I'm using this because I've recommended it a lot in previous videos and tutorials, and it's a really good product, so I might as well use it. So I'm gonna take some of this eyeliner and I'm taking it onto a flat brush this time, just straight out the pot. And what we're gonna do is plop this all over the lid. So all over your actual eyelid, we're gonna take this and plop it all over and absolutely cover it in the black liner. Now we are gonna set this with black eyeshadow, so don't worry about it. It's not gonna stay creamy and runny, but I'm using a cream product again because it's easier to blend out. Because if you start going with black eyeshadow and I'm blending it in with brown eyeshadow, it might become a big messy nightmare and you'll probably end up blaming me. So instead, use a cream product and it's so much easier to blend. It'll blend into the look perfectly and you can set it with black eyeshadow and it will last all day long. And I'm just kind of plopping it all over the place. I'm not even being precise with it. I'm putting it on the lid and taking it a little bit higher than the lid as well. Just so we can actually see it when you put it on. And then I'm going to take another clean brush. This is a really small one. It's the Morphe M506. I had to read it then. <laughs> and we're going to basically, side to side motions again, blend out the edges of the eyeliner. And it might be a bit hard to blend sometimes because it is drying down matte. So just keep trying, wiggle it about a bit, and it will blend out soon enough. So just keep blending. You can even pat along the edge. That sometimes helps. Same on this side, just blend it out. And don't worry if there's any patchiness or anything, blend it out as much as you can, because when you put your black eyeshadow, you can blend out that eyeshadow, you can blend it out with the brown eyeshadow. Don't worry about it. Like I said, this is super beginner friendly, super easy to do. And as you can see, I'm not exactly even being precise. Normally I'm quite a precise person with makeup, but with this look, you don't need to be precise at all. <laughs> and to blend it out even further, I'm gonna take that dark brown eyeshadow and kind of just plop it on top and brush along the side. Just brushing the edges out again, making sure it's super blended out and super smooth. So once you've blended out the black cream into the rest of the look, you need to set it with black eyeshadow. Now you can take absolutely any black eyeshadow you want. They'll all work because we've got the black cream down. It doesn't need to be too pigmented or anything. Just make sure you've got a good black eyeshadow to set it down with. 
I'm going to be using this black called No Objections from the P. Louise Wedding Wish Palette. You don't have to get this entire palette for the black eyeshadow, please don't. <laughs> be a massive waste of money. It is a good palette, but don't get it just because I'm using it. And I tend to find that a fluffier brush that's a little bit loose and not so dense is best for this. So I'm going to take this very nice Jetta Beauty brush and I'm going to basically pat on the black eyeshadow onto the liner. Now before people ask, the liner is almost dry. It's like a semi-dry. I've just let it sit there for a little bit. It's not too wet. So I'm just patting it right on top and look how the difference. It's matte, it's black, it's perfect. Same on this side. Just patting it on and building it up. And again, if you do take this too high or get it too messy, don't worry. You can always wipe it off underneath. You can always blend it out with a brown. Don't worry about it. It's easy to fix, trust me. And I'm actually going to make this look a bit more glam to bring that sexy glam look into it. So we can do that, but you can leave it as it is now. Just a nice black smoky eye. You can do your under eyes and your face and you'll be done but I'm going to glitz it up a bit. Now to make it a little step forward and make it a bit more glam, I'm going to be using the Made by Mitchell blush again. And this is in the shade Drip Drip, which is a very glittery metallic silver. And I'm actually going to take this on the back of my hand. So right on the back of my hand, because it is super shiny, super liquidy. I mean, look at that. But if you take it onto a brush and you just brush through it a little bit, it turns into like a little bit of a wet glitter and you can just pat it on top of the eye and it makes a super shiny glittery effect. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pat it right on top of that smoky black. And look at that, ooh, I absolutely love this. It's the trending product on TikTok at the moment. So I don't know if it is gonna be in stock. I'll link it down below, it might not be. But I absolutely love this. I mean, look how it just takes that look to the next level. And also if you have got hooded eyes, a shimmer is a good way to go because when you blink or open your eyes like that, you've got a nice little peekaboo moment. But shimmer doesn't crease. Well, it does, but shimmer when it creases just looks like more shimmer. It doesn't leave any lines or anything, so you're all good. And I'm gonna take the black eyeshadow brush and just blend out the edges ever so slightly, just so it looks a bit more cohesive and not so splattered on. And that's basically the top eyeshadow done. So I would add a nice lash to this, but we're gonna do the rest of the face first. So let's get into the face products. So now it's time for the face makeup and the face makeup is a key part in making it last. We've got to feminize the face and we've got to look absolutely Photoshop face tune finish ready. We've got to look smooth, we've got to look dramatic, but also soft like a woman. It's a lot of work, all right? But it's a really simple process, trust me. I'm gonna do it in a one, two, three process. We're gonna do medium, then we're gonna do light and dark and add a few details like blush and things. So first things first, we need to prepare. Like we did with the eyes, we need to prime the face. So I'm gonna be using the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. It's the trending primer at the moment and it is actually quite good. You can get this in Boots, Superdrug, any drugstore. I use free pumps, that's normally what does me. And I'm gonna take some, mix it in my hands and I basically put it all over the face but I concentrate it wherever you're gonna to touch the face or wherever you're gonna drink, eat. You need to put it around the mouth, around the under the eyes, the nose and the forehead as well. Cause these are the places that you end up touching the most with your fingers or it's the places that you end up sweating the most, especially if you're out dancing or I don't know, you decide to do a runner. This is just gonna help the makeup stick in place. It's quite a sticky primer. It really does make your face quite sticky. And now we're gonna go in with foundation. So the foundation I'm using is the HMB Cosmetics Soft Focus Foundation. You can get this at Boots off HMB website or the TikTok shop. And I'm using the shade LF5, which might not be my perfect shade, but who actually cares, come on. So I'm gonna take some of this on the back of my hand. And I, today, I'm gonna to be using a beauty sponge, which I don't normally do, but it's an easier way for you to learn how to do your base. And this sponge, it's actually the Brat sponge from Primark. I mean, look how fab that is. You can use any sponge you like. Pretty much all beauty sponges from Amazon, eBay, the posh ones, it boots. They all do the same thing. So I'm gonna take the flat side, I'm gonna take some of this foundation, and I'm gonna start patting it into the skin. 
And you basically want to put this foundation absolutely everywhere. You want to cover your entire face, you want to cover your neck, your forehead, you can even cover your body if you're showing parts of your body and you want it to match. Just cover absolutely everything in foundation. And look how fast I did that with the sponge and it's smooth, it's flawless. This foundation is full coverage. It's not drag queen coverage, but it is full coverage in the makeup sense. I think it looks quite nice. It looks really soft. This color is quite nice and it just blends out amazing. It looks really good on camera as well. And take some onto the forehead. And even if you're wearing a wig with a fringe, which I know a lot of my friends do, they don't bother doing the forehead. Do the forehead. If someone snatches your wig or the wind blows it off, you're gonna look pretty rough on the forehead area. And take it all the way down the neck as well. Cover up that stubble that I've left behind. I've got a few fine lines and wrinkles there. Don't question me. <laughs> and I even take it onto the ears as well. So now it's time to contour and highlight the face. And I'm gonna highlight the face with a concealer. And I'm using the exact same concealer that we used on the eyes, the HMB one in 0.5. Taking this exact same concealer, I'm gonna put it under the eyes, creating some absolutely huge triangles right under the face, just like this. Because we really wanna highlight the face, we wanna make it look bright, wanna look refreshed, and it also helps feminize the face when you have bright spots near the center. And I'm taking it all the way out here as well because I want to have that snatched look and I want to make it look like I've got massive cheekbones. When I don't really. Put some on the chin. I'm also gonna put some on the upper lip, the nose. And I'm gonna take some onto the forehead as well, right in the center. And I'll take a tiny, tiny amount and put it just there, right where the ear is. And when we contour the face, it's gonna make sense later. It's gonna make it look super snatched. Taking the exact same sponge, and we're taking the pointy end this time, and we're gonna push that into the skin. Just patting it right into the rest of the look. And when you get to your eyeshadow, I like to leave a nice sharp line so it kind of snatches it up, but it's up to you. You can just blend it in as you see fit. But I'm just gonna pat along and create a nice line like that and it just creates a nice little snatched up moment. And I always meet the upper lip into the rest of the face, just so it kind of all becomes one and it looks really nice and blended. And then pounce on the chin and then do the nose. And I just cover the whole nose in concealer because we can contour it later on. There's no point in getting fussy about the nose just yet. And then the forehead as well. And for these bits, I'm basically gonna pat along and create a nice sharp line like that. Not Trixie Mattel style line, but a nice sharp subtle line that just helps contour the face. And if you've got any parts of the makeup where it's not exactly blended properly, like I've got a patch here and around the chin normally, it's not too blended or the forehead, just take the flat side with the foundation and go around the edge and it just blends it into the rest of the face. Now it's time to contour the face, which is a very key part of feminizing the face and making you go from male to female. And I'm gonna be taking the exact same cream product we use in the eyes, the Made by Mitchell Caramel Chisel color. And this is a very bronzy color and I like to look bronzed and like I've got a tan. So we're gonna take this and I'm gonna take it basically where the ear is, the top of the ear, and bring it slightly into about where the eye level is. So I'll show you, I take it along just like that. And with this product, the Made by Mitchell one, you have to kind of blend it out really quickly. Because if you don't, you'll end up with a big dry streak. So I'm gonna take the big part where the foundation was, I'm gonna start blending that into the skin. And obviously that looks really dark at first, but as you blend it in, look how light and subtle, subtle it makes you look. I mean, look at that, isn't that just stunning? But if you do get this Mitchell products, just remember, blend it out before it dries or else you end up with a big streak on your face and you can't really fix that. <laughs> Same on this side, top of the ear, bringing it in and blend it out with the sponge. And I always start in the inner part first because that's the bit that you want to be blended like that. And then I kind of bring and take it upwards. 
And if you find that you've over blended or there's contour all over your face, take the pointy end and just dab over it. And it will blend the concealer in. And I'm also going to sharpen up this part like that. And that bit as well. I'm also going to contour the jaw. So I just go along the jaw both sides and about the chin as well. And contouring the jaw just helps push everything up and it gives you a really nice feminine jawline. I'm patting it with the big fat part of the sponge as well. And this is more of a contour colour than an actual bronze. It's like an in-between. So it does help shape the face with those subtle grey tones. But because it's got the bronzer in, it just makes you not look dead. And it makes you look a bit more bronzed and tanned. And I'm also going to take this all over the forehead as well. Big splotches on either side of the forehead just to help contour it, make it look a bit more feminine. And it also helps when you're putting your wig on as well. And just pat that in on the perimeter of the forehead. Same on this side. And I kind of meet it up in the middle along the hairline, just so you've got a nice little rainbow effect of contour, so nothing looks too out of place. And I'm gonna take the pointy side and just go along the middle. And along anywhere that might need a little bit of a touch up. And for the nose, I'm literally going to take tiny, tiny spots like that. And you can do two, you can do one, it doesn't really matter. But I'm taking tiny spots because I'm not going to really contour, contour the nose. I'm just going to give it a little bit of something. And I'm going to take the pointy end and just push it in on the sides of the nose. Again, I'm not contouring it too much. I don't want it to look too drag. I want it to just be a nice subtle contour to match the rest of the face. Now I'm going to be using a cream blush today because I fancy it and I think it looks really nice. So I'm going to be using the P. Louise Cheek of It blush in the shade Melon Mood. Now you don't have to do this, you can do normal blush. But I just think this is a really nice product and it makes your blush look just blended and flawless. So I'm going to take this and it comes with a sponge applicator and I'm going to put it right around here on the higher cheekbone like that. Put quite a bit on because it is more of a subtle product once you blend it out. And I'm going to take the exact same sponge and the tip of it and I'm just going to pat it in right where I put it. I'm not going to move it about too much, just patting it right on top of the bronzer and concealer. It's like in between them and it just helps everything blend together and it gives you a nice flush of colour as well. I do normally like a peachy blush, but this pink is quite subtle and blush is a great way to feminise the face. Blush just makes you look younger, it brings colour to your face and it just brings the life back into your skin. Now it's time to powder, so I'm going to powder the entire face and first we're going to use an under eye powder and highlight powder and then we're going to set everything with another powder. So for the highlight powder I'm going to be using Huda Beauty powder in the shade Cupcake and this is a baking powder so you've got to be kind of careful with it and don't put too much on. So I'm going to be taking the sponge on the pointy end and take a little bit of this powder and I'm going to pat it right under the eyes where we put that concealer. Now you can use a brush if you want to use a brush, I normally do, but for the sake of saving your money and making it super beginner friendly, we're using a sponge today because it's the same sponge you've used, so you might as well keep using it. And sometimes a sponge actually helps the powder sink into the rest of the makeup, it just helps it blur everything and make it proper sink in there so the makeup don't move at all. And that's what this powder is literally meant to do, it's meant to make your makeup not budge. But this one in particular is very blurring, which is why I use it. It has a little effect and it just makes all your wrinkles and all your pores disappear. I don't know what kind of magic it is, but it works for me. And I'm setting the chin, I'm going to set up a lip and it doesn't taste nice. So I'm trying not to talk when you're doing it. Oh. I'm going to set all over the nose as well and set the forehead with it. Now for the rest of the face, I'm going to take the HMB Cosmetics Soft Focus Powder in the shade Translucent. It's just a translucent powder. You can use any translucent powder that works for you. I'm going to take this lovely powder and we're going to take a buffing brush. It's like a big fluffy brush. This is from Amazon. And make sure you get a loose powder and you're going to pat it all over the face. And again, this just sets it all in place, makes it not move. And it also helps blur everything and make it look 
completely soft and seamless. But make sure you're using a loose powder, you know, where it's loose and it comes out of the tub and you have to pat it on and it'll fall apart and go all over your clothes and face. But a lot of people come to me for lessons, they look at what I do on YouTube and they come with a pressed translucent powder, something in a compact. That's not gonna set your face. I don't even know what they do. I don't know why people make them, but don't set your face with that. And then the same brush, just brush off all the powder that's just sitting on top because you don't want it to just sit there and bake. You want it to brush it off because your face is set now, so you don't need the powder to just sit there. So now once you've set your face with powder, we're gonna go in with some pressed powders like bronzers, blush, some shimmery highlight, and all that's gonna complete the look. So we're gonna go in with bronzer now, and I'm using the MAC Dark Tan Mineralized Skin Finish Powder, and I use this all the time. It's my favorite bronzer. It's a little bit subtle, it's the right color, it's bronzy, it's a little bit orange, but it's my perfect color and I love it. So we're gonna take it on an angled brush. This is from Amazon as well, the brand Jessa Beauty, and we're gonna take some of this bronzer, and because we've already done the cream contour, just put this right on top. So just brush it along, putting it right on top of that bronzer we put down before. And as you can see, it's just enhancing the contour. It's snatching the face, it's feminizing the face as well. And it's also creating a nice bronzy tone and it just makes you look just nice. <laughs> this is definitely a key step in feminizing the face. You don't have to do the cream contour. I just find it easier when you do the cream contour and all the creams, you just put the powders on top and then you're pretty much done. It's not hard. Whilst if you went in with this powder first, you'd have to figure out where you're gonna put it, is it gonna blend out right, and all that stuff. But now I'm just slapping it on, building it up as you go. You can make it intense. I make it quite intense because I'm using it for camera and pictures. But it's up to you how intense you want it. Contour in the jaw and along the chin as well. And taking it all along the forehead because I like a really bronzed forehead look. I think it really helps with the wigs. And it just makes it look nice and contoured and i take it all over absolutely slamming it on and for the nose i'm going to take a tiny little fluffy eyeshadow brush and take the exact same bronzer and i'm just going to go along the bridge of the nose where we contoured before nothing too fancy you can contour your nose how you want if you want it super sharp if you want it super contoured or if you just want to leave it how it is totally up to you I just kind of brush along the bridge and it kind of does it for me because I've got quite a big nose. So I tend not to contour it too much because then it will make it look a bit weird. And then I blend it out with the same bronzer brush, just brush along just so it's nice and blended out. Now for blush, I'm gonna take the MAC Peaches Blush. This is my perfect shade. Again, it's another subtleish product, but you can really build it up. And I'm taking this on a dome shaped brush by Holly Fitz Martin. And I'm gonna take a lot of this blush and basically put it where we put the cream blush before. And if you didn't use cream blush, just put it right in between the contour and the concealer area, right in between. And it just helps blend the light into the dark. And it depends what shade of blush you want. You can use a pink blush, you can use peachy, you can use an orange. You can use whatever blush you like. I like a nice peachy blush because I think with the black eyes and the glam look and the bronzer, it just all works out and it's all a similar tone. And I also bring it quite close into the cheek. Depends how far you want to bring it in. Some people just put it here. I put it basically all over because I really like blush. And I'm gonna put some on the nose, the chin and the forehead as well. And that's just to blend the darks into the lights a little bit better, especially on camera. And now for a little bit of shimmer on the face, I'm gonna take the Doll Beauty highlighters in the shade Champagne and Supernova. Basically, I'm just gonna mix these two shades together on an eyeshadow brush. I'm gonna put it right on the cheekbone, so basically on top of the blush, right there. And it just creates a nice little shimmer on the face and it just brings the skin back to life. Now this is one of the best techniques in makeup when you're wearing a lot of makeup like me. This little trick just brings it back to reality and makes it look like skin again. I'll put it on the chin, on the upper lip, a little dash on the nose and some on the forehead as well. 
So now we're basically done with the face. Now it's time for the finishing details. So I need to do the lips and I need to do under the eyes as well. So we're going to do under the eyes first because I look a little bit bald without it. So I'm going to take this lovely black eyeliner. And this is a Maybelline eyeliner and I think it's the... Oh, it's a Tattoo Line Smoky. I never know the difference. I've got about five of them. Basically, it's a twisty up eyeliner. I'm going to put this in the waterline. So I'm going to bring this down and put it right in that waterline under the eye. I just cover the entire waterline in this because I like it black and smoky. We kind of want it to match the top. I mean, look at the difference between that and that. I mean, already it looks tons better. And you don't have to use a black if you don't want. You can use a brown. Or if you struggle with putting things in your eye, you can just leave it. You can put black eyeshadow right underneath if you need to. But I just think this really enhances the look. I think it enhances any makeup look. It's just the perfect finishing touch. And just to set that in place to make sure it's super black, because sometimes pencils can be a bit dry or a bit rubbish. So we're going to take this very tiny, tiny eyeshadow brush into that black eyeshadow we used earlier. I'm going to pat that right on top of where we put the eyeliner and you can even take it lower if you want a full smoky eye i'm not going to take it too low because i want all the attention to be on the top part so we're just going to blend it out ever so slightly and this just sets it in place especially if you've got watery eyes it just helps it not move at all and i'm going to take a clean blending brush and just brush underneath ever so slightly just to blend it out now you could leave it like that if you want that dramatic 90s smoky vibe but i'm going to take a little bit of the dark brown eyeshadow on a very flat brush and just smoke out in side side motions right underneath just kind of tie it in with the rest of the look i don't want it to be a super harsh line and I think when you blend it out, it also helps cover up any bags. And I've got a lot of bags under my eyes. So it just helps smoke it out. And I think it just looks even more effective when you do. It just looks super dramatic and just like, oh. Now, just to finish the eyes off just a little bit, we're going to take that drip, drip shade, that silver metallic glitter from the Made by Mitchell. And we're going to take this on a very small brush, just a tiny brush like this. And I'm just going to take a pinch of that glitter and put it right on the inner corner. Right down there. And it just completes the look and brings that glitter under the eye as well. And it just brings the glam back into it so it's not so serious. And it also covers up any bags as well. And just for a little bit of fun, I'm going to place it right underneath the eyeshadow as well. Right under the middle part. Just to add a little pinch of glitter into it. Because why not? Let's make it look a little bit fancy. So now it's time for the final step, the lips. And I'm going to do a nude lip because I think it works for everyone. It works in every look. You can do a red if you want to go fully out there. Or you can even use a black lip or a purple. This look basically works with every colour lip. But we're going to do a nude. So I'm going to take the Morphe Lip Liner in the shade Spiffy, which is a brown nudish liner. And I'm going to outline and overdraw my lips. So I'm going to start on the bottom. Just following that natural line first. And then I'm going to overdraw my top lip. I just kind of overdraw it a little bit. Sometimes it's really dramatic, but sometimes it's just a little bit. Totally up to you how you do it. I think when you overdraw your lip, it just looks a bit more feminine and a bit more woman-like, whilst a lot of men do have thinner lips. So I do tend to overdraw quite a bit, but I only overdraw on the top part. The bottom I kind of just leave because it's it looks a bit weird when you overdraw the bottom. And now I'm going to take a lipstick and I'm going to be using the P. Louise Lip Base in the shade Can't Resist. Very, very pale lipstick, but we're going to put a gloss on top that makes it look a bit more natural. And this one comes in a little tube, so I'm just going to squeeze it out of the tube and put it on the lip. Now that looks kind of crazy, I know. Unless you wanted to go for like that 90s, early 2000s lip, then this is for you. <laughs> I'm going to take the lip liner and just blend it in. And I kind of like that lip, not going to lie. It's a bit questionable because I'm putting gloss on, so I haven't really made that much effort. <laughs> but it's a very 90s editorial lip. It also looks kind of wrong, but it looks right in a weird way. But I know you're here for a good tutorial. So we're going to be taking a lip gloss, and this is the Shades of London gloss in the shade Honey. I'm going to take this, I'm going to pop it all over. And this is a nice pinky turn gloss. 
and it just brings it back to reality a little bit. It smells really nice as well, actually. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of a pinkier gloss. This is Double Booked by Doll Beauty. And this is quite a darker pink. Oh, look at that. That's what I want. Because I wanted the brightness of the lipstick, but I didn't want it too dark. So a gloss on top is a perfect way to get it that in-between shade. Just so it's not too pink and it's not too nude, it's not too dark. That's what I want. Them subtle differences, that's what counts. And that's basically the look complete. So I'm going to go off camera and add my lashes, wig. I might finish off a few details, put the tapes on, and I'll be back for the final look. And this is a final and completed look. I mean, isn't this just the perfect, sexy, glam makeup look? I think I look absolutely stunning. I don't care what you say. I do look absolutely stunning, thank you. And this look was so easy to do. It is a super beginner friendly look. It works for absolutely everyone. I've said that about a thousand times, but it's true. I can do it, you can do it. It is really easy. All you need to do is practice, have a go, try with your products at home. You can obviously use my products that I recommend, but try with yours first. See what you like, see what you can come up with and see if you can recreate this look too. I mean, I think it's very glam and I hope smoky eyes come back into fashion. I mean, they're always in fashion, but I hope this comes back into fashion. Thank you very much for watching another one of my tutorials. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed yourself as well. And if you want to see some more fabulous makeup tutorials by yours truly, then make sure you watch the next video here.